My name is uh, Manuel Zuckerman and I'm a general manager from uh, Fimor in France and we've been a manufacturer of squeegees for the last uh, 35 years. So I'm just going to talk to you rapidly about um, uh, the importance of uh, the squeegee which is a, a tool that you must have in, uh, in screen printing and that is often overlooked. Um, in fact, uh, one of my friends in the US uh, has uh, mentioned that uh, um, yeah, the squeegee is one of the most important tool in screen printings. If you uh, don't pay enough attention to it, uh, it can create a lot of, uh, of problems. He has a much better way of setting it. I'll let you read his, his quote. Uh, these are the, the topics we are going to, to cover in the uh, next uh, half hour. Uh, explain what types of uh, squeegees there are, how they are made, uh, and more importantly, um, how to choose the right squeegee for your, um, for your application. And uh, we'll do a little bit of uh, problem solving as well. Um, most of the squeegees today are made of uh, polyurethane. Um, why polyurethane? Polyurethane is used because it has uh, three important characteristics. Uh, the first one is the chemical resistance, because obviously the ink is dipped into um, inks and uh, chemicals. The second is the abrasion resistance, because the squeegee uh, will um, uh, go back and, uh, back and forth uh, on, a, on, a, on a polyester mesh. And last, uh, it will require elastic properties uh, in order to, to force uh, the ink through, through the mesh. Um, there are three basic uh, families of polyurethane that are used in uh, modern um, squeegee manufacturers. Most of what you will find in the market today is either TDI uh, this is a cheaper grade of polyurethane which is primarily found in Asia. Uh, NDI is a more expensive type, is a an older type uh, which some of you may recognize under the name of uh, Volcolan. And the most commonly found material is uh, called MDI. Uh, the vast majority of squeegees today are um, <coughs> made using a centrifugation process. Uh, basically, this is a drum uh, which rotates relatively fast in which you pour uh, liquid, liquid polyurethane and out of that you come, um, comes a cylinder uh, of cured polyurethane uh, which uh, is then uh, cut, as you can see on the next slide. There you go, oh, sorry, yes. Um, from this cylinder you make a flat sheet which then you cut into uh, blades and then you can cut them into smaller uh, blades if uh, required. The advantage of centrifugation is that it takes out uh, the bubbles from the material uh, and it makes a very, um, very accurate uh, surface uh, which is required for, um, for, for screen printing. This one. There is another manufacturing technique which we don't do but some of our colleagues are doing where you can actually mold squeegees individually. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. Uh, so that comes the uh, the first two um, families of squeegees are cut squeegees which come from the sheets which are then cut. Uh, they have the advantage of um, offering four identical edges. Uh, the molded squeegee on the contrary um, uh, you have two molded edges that are the button uh, material uh, they can be easily recognized by this two rounded edge, which some of uh, some customers like, some printers like, because they are um, very good to produce a uniform layer. And um, when you're printing on um, large large areas, uh, but the problem is as soon as you sharpen them, 
these molded edge disappear. So you end up with a completely different edge. So that's why this is typically used for uh, CDs or small squeegees uh, where you don't really resharpen. And the last type of um, squeegees you can find in the market is called composite. Uh, these are typically quite more expensive squeegees which are used for cylinder presses. You can see on some of them. They're not made by my company and they are typically used on very fast machines. Okay. When you need to choose the squeegees, you need to look at, into uh, uh, typically four di different criteria. Typically, it's going to be your hardness, uh, the dimension that you require, and the blade profile, and the type of edge that you will want. So the, what we've been discussing, the, the cut edge or the, the molded edge. Yeah. The hardness. The hardness is uh, really what uh, determines uh, the, the flexibility of the squeegee and typically um, it, will also have a, an, it will also affect the amount of squeegees that will be deposited on, on, the, um, on the substrate. Uh, the hardness is measured with a durometer like this. And typically you have three different uh, uh, range of hardness, soft, about 55 to 65 shore, medium, 70 to 80 shore, and hard, which is 80 or 85 shore. Keep in mind that all manufacturers have tolerances in manufacturing, plus minus three shore, so it's not an exact science. When you order an 80 shore, for instance, Typically, you can obtain uh, something between, uh, if it's 80, you can uh, get 77 to 83 shore. Huh? So, um, that depends also on, manu each manufacturer has its own range of hardness. The general rule is that uh, the lower hardness will give you more ink deposit and the higher hardness uh, will give you less uh, ink deposit, which is why in textile printing you will use typically 60 to 70 shore or 65. Uh, 75 shore is typically a medium hardness, which you can use for the vast majority of application. Whereas the 80-85 shore is a harder type, which will be used typically for uh, UV printing. You also have the possibility of combining hardnesses in what are called uh, triple durometer. Uh, there are two types of uh, multi durometer hardness in the market. One uh, which uh, combines two hardness stacked uh, on top of the other, and uh, the other one, uh, which has a center layer, which is 90 shore, and two um, softer layers. This is particularly recommended when you want to have a combination of good details and thicker ink deposit. Also, when you are doing longer runs, because uh, with time, the squeegee has a tendency to bend a little bit, uh, so with a harder layer in the center, it will stay with a good angle for a longer time. So this is more expensive material, but it will give you better results, especially in the long, uh, over the long run. Typically, one uh, new product that we introduced, uh, for instance, is a 55-90-55 shore. This is more for use for textile. Uh, where you can have, um, have uh, you can print high density ink like a white uh, background, or you can bring uh, gel inks, uh, and still you can control the definition. Uh, before people were using uh, the um, what is called the bull nose, the rounded edge, uh, but if you use a rounded edge for that, you can lose easily in definition because you you it will really compress. Um, and, uh, and, and you really will lose uh, the definition and, and, uh, and precision of your, um, of your print. Whereas using a triple drometer like this will, will keep you to have both a thick layer of ink and to maintain a good definition. Uh, 
I do have um, some samples here where you can see uh, with different uh, hardness combination. I will pass this around and you can see the difference um, which you can get for the same uh, parameter with different, just changing the, the hardness or the hardness combination. The other parameter to consider is the dimension. It's very important to have a, a dimension of squeegees that fits right in your squeegee holder. Uh, and um, uh, and that, in, in, that has enough clearance with the screen. For instance, You must have two thirds of uh, the, the material out and about one third inside, approximately. If you have uh, too much out on the squeegee, it may bend too much. And um, if you have too little out of the squeegee holder, you don't have, you're not using the elasticity of the material. Then you can use uh, different uh, squeegee profiles, uh, the V-shape, the point, or the bull nose, which is a rounded edge. These are for very specific applications. 95% uh, of what we are manufacturing is using the straight profile, the square edge. Um, typically, the, the, the pointed profile is used for object printing while the rounded edge is used for some textile application. Yeah, you can... Uh, this is, okay. What is very important is um, to understand how the squeegee works. Uh, you need to understand that, in fact, the, the, the squeegee is not forcing the ink, uh, even though it looks like it's not forcing the ink through the mesh. It's only filling the mesh op openings, okay? And then it's uh, the, um, uh, uh, the surface tension between the substrate and the ink that will make uh, the ink adhere to the, to the material and stay on the material. So you, that's why you must not, you don't need to apply too much pressure on the squeegee, uh, only enough to fill in the, the holes of the mesh. You'll, the, the squeegee is also used to maintain uh, so that the, the mesh keeps a contact uh, with, a, with a substrate. Uh, then it will remove the, exce the excess of ink uh, from your screen and it will also adapt the mesh to the substrate, especially if you have an irregular shaped uh, substrate, like bottles for instance. Regarding the dimensions that you need to choose, it's also very important to adapt your squeegees together uh, to the screen that you're using and also to the printed image. For instance, if you have, um, if you have a squeegee that is too long and that goes too close to, this, uh, to the edges of your screen, it will create uh, a lot of tension where you have uh, the red arrows and you will have less um, force in the center where your image is. So that's why we recommend that you keep more, that you keep a, a stock of uh, holders and squeegees adapted to the different sizes of, um, uh, of the image that you will print. The other important consideration is uh, the off-contact, which is uh, the distance between uh, the mesh uh, and the bed with uh, the, the substrate. You can see with this representation that if your off-contact is too high, then your squeegee angle with the mesh will vary a lot, uh, depending whether you have a high off-contact or a low off-contact. So of course, a low off-contact is recommended for the vast majority of uh, applications. The off-contact will, of course, uh, have an effect on the squeegee angle, but also you can yourself set up the squeegee angle. You can see that 
uh, if you have uh, um, a squeegee which is too vertical, you can have a poor feel, uh, but a good snap-off. The snap-off is figuratively uh, the, uh, the, the, the mesh lifting uh, from, the surf, from the substrate after the, uh, after the squeegee. Um, oh, sorry, if it is on the contrary, uh, if your squeegee is too inclinated, as an inclination that is too much, uh, then you will have a very good feel, but the snap-off will not be very good. Um, the, the squeegee will drag, uh, and the screen will drag along after the passage of the squeegee. So really the best is around 60 degree, and at the end it will end up with about 45 degree at the tip. Speed and pressure are, of course, very important parameters. Uh, there, there are no absolute rules. It's really up to each printer to determine uh, the best parameters, understanding that this may vary depending on uh, your inks and even within a print run. In general, what is very important is to keep minimal pressure as possible. Uh, when, I do, uh, rec when I do testing with customers, I re always recommend to start with minimal pressure and uh, increase the pressure with time until you get the, the, right, um, uh, the right print. Uh, so don't start with too much pressure. On the contrary, start with minimal pressure and work it up. So really the recommendation are adapt the squeegee to the screen and the image size. Uh, keep several uh, sets of uh, float bar and squeegee depending on your prints and rotate them uh, regularly in order to reduce the pressure on edges. Now a little bit of problem solving which uh, sometimes are related to squeegees. Smear, which is typically this type of defect uh, sometimes people will, uh, um, uh, will blame it on the squeegee. There are different issues, uh, different sources. The primary one may be a movement between the substrate and the screen during the printing or too much pressure on your squeegee. Secondary causes may be uh, a improper uh, 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 screen tension and of contact. Also, you need to check the, the pressure of the, of the float bar. Yeah, next. Uh, streaks, which are often associated to uh, squeegee issues. So yes, it can be an issue with uh, squeegees, but generally if it's an issue with squeegee, it's easy to spot because you can uh, run your finger along uh, the edge and you can uh, feel if there is a defect on the, on the edge. Uh, also, if you move the squeegee a little bit, you will see the streaks which will follow exactly uh, the movement of the squeegee. Uh, but very often the, 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 the stripes can also uh, be due to um, uh, components, uh, for instance, uh, dirt marks, uh, sorry, dirt or pieces of ink that has started to dry uh, and that can be dragged by the squeegee. So it's not necessarily the squeegee itself. Next one. Uneven ink deposit, it's a little bit difficult to see here. Uh, Sometimes people think it's also the, 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 squ the squeegees, but the lines may not be absolutely parallel and they are not very thin. They can be a uh, difference in color that, have a, that are a few millimeters to a few centimeters. Uh, this can be due by the uh, fact that the, the pressure of the squeegee is not completely even throughout the, the bed uh, or that your bed, the bed of the machine is not perfectly even itself. There can be other secondary uh, causes as you can see here. Next one. Very important now is about the squeegee maintenance. So of course, good storage condition uh, if you want to keep your squeegee a long time. So um, I recommend that it's kept in um, uh, air-conditioned temperature, especially in tropical countries. 
uh, and protected from the from the from the light. Next one. You must understand that as soon as you start uh, using your squeegee, it will start to wear. That means that the edge will round up progressively and either it's going to make a defect on your print or you're going to increase the uh, amount of ink that will be deposited. Uh, it can go up to 15% more ink deposit or 20% more ink deposit uh, with time. So it's very important to maintain a squeegee edge properly sharpened. Very important also to the cleaning, cleaning operation. I have been to some printers that left the squeegee soaked in ink, in UV inks, and they didn't worry because they say, oh, it's UV ink, it doesn't dry. Okay, it doesn't dry, but progressively it can go slowly inside the squeegee, and because it doesn't dry, it will never come out. So uh, clean it immediately after using. Next one. Here are some, uh, some ideas of solvents uh, that can be used for cleaning the, the, the squeegee and you can see that uh, uh, some uh, ink degradant like uh, NVP or NMP are also very um, strong uh, degradant of the polyurethane itself. So we recommend uh, products uh, such as ethanol or isoforon, uh, but you can also use a stronger uh, solvent if you don't let them soak in those solvents for a long time. This is just to illustrate some tests that we've done with uh, different manufacturers of ink, uh, solvent inks. So uh, you can see that depending on the ink, it can have a strong influence on the, on the squeegee resistance itself. Uh, whatever ink you use, you it's better for you to test it uh, with the squeegees first. This is the same for UV ink, except that with UV ink, the aggression is much less. Uh, we are looking at 7% uh, swelling compared to uh, up to 15 or 20% with solvent inks, which have, have also occurs much faster. Next one. So squeegee sharpening now, which is very, very important in order to, uh, to get good qualities. It's not only to save on your uh, squeegee material, but it's also to get uh, much better print quality, uh, to reduce uh, the production costs and the setup time, and reduce the overall uh, supply costs, because as I stated before, if your squeegee is not properly sharpened, it will deposit more ink, and you may end up uh, spending a lot more time uh, trying to set up your, um, your work properly. There are different um, techniques for squeegee sharpenings. Uh, the two old ones, which are belt sanding and stone wheels, are not really appropriate. Uh, the ones that you find out most commonly nowadays are diamond wheels. Uh, we our company has uh, sharpeners which offer these techniques. The other um, uh, common technique is with a cutting wheel, which is fine as well, but it takes out a, a lot more material. Uh, and it's a little bit more expensive to, to operate. It's very important when you sharpen your squeegee to wait a little bit until your solvent evaporates uh, so that you only sharpen a squeegee that is uh, dry and clean. I have seen already printers uh, that were taking uh, the, the squeegee and it was still full of ink when they went to sharpen it. It's not good at all. Some practical tips. I know the, uh, a lot of people don't think enough about the importance of the squeegee, so I will always, always insist when I visit customers that uh, they train the different operator about how important is a squeegee, that uh, proper care should be uh, applied, uh, that some people are trained to uh, maintain it, to clean it, to sharpen it. Uh, and that also you keep records of what squeegees you use for what material or what machines. Uh, for a given job, please note what squeegee was used so that when you're doing the same job over and over, uh, you can um, uh, remember what squeegee was used and you can uh, redo the same job with the same parameters easily. Uh, 
and I think that's pretty much it. So I don't know if you have any question. Uh, I'm all ears, and I will circulate um, uh, these uh, prints showing uh, inks with different um, uh, squeegee hardness. We also have uh, a guide which uh, uh, explains why and how to sharpen squeegees. I have a few copies here. If uh, you need more, I have some on my booth, uh, which is right down the same aisle, but uh, at the other end. Thank you very much.